up, guys? How y'all doing today? Um, listen, we got so much to talk about. The federal, the re- newspapers are reporting that that federal raid and investigation has been expanded. And baby, they are looking at J Lo and her dealings with Diddy. But baby, that's not over. If you guys haven't heard, the girl that got bang banged in the face by well, she claims Diddy, the court said Shine, are demanding that the case be reopened. And she's saying that she can prove through bullet fragments that it was Diddy. But get this, the reason why Jay Lee don't want that to come out is because she was apparently holding um, uh, uh, Diddy's bang bang. I guess she's heard, I need a ride or die. And she took that too seriously. You guys, we delved into blind items from that time and we actually found proof of what's going on. But to top it off, it looks like J-Lo may have actually known that the investigation was centering on her time with Diddy because J-Lo has been systematically, if you believe the creators on TikTok, and I do, literally trying to close and strike with copyright strikes and everything else, the biggest um, gossip pages and even just regular people on TikTok because they are mentioning her name. Now, the thing is, it seemed like she was doing it because everybody was clowning her over that uh, movie, This Is Us Now. (laughs) Did y'all see that mess? I'm not gonna lie. It did make me look at J-Lo like, oh, I guess you're a big sucker for love. I guess emphasis on the sucker. But when I say that was one of the worst soundtracks, worst music, I, like J-Lo does not have imposter syndrome. She is the epitome of, baby, you going to hear this voice no matter what you do. Auto-tune be damned. I got a gift. Anyway, J-Lo started this campaign to silence people on TikTok three days before it dropped about the federal investigation now. You might believe in coincidences, but I don't because y'all have to actually think about it, right? If she knows that she's about to get dragged into the Diddy stuff, and let's make no mistake, her and Diddy were tight, tight, tight. I got some blind items I can read. This is all the way back from 2000, whatever, that we're talking about the weird, messed up stuff that she was into with Diddy. Again, she doesn't want in this anything coming out. She thinks she can scare people. This is what the creators are saying. On top of that, when I say that she was going for people, she wasn't just trying to get them hit with copyright strikes. She was getting people's accounts suspended, closed down. It was a big thing. All I got to say with J-Lo is, girl, okay, you are already being clowned. Did y'all see that J-Lo documentary when J-Lo was like, this was J-Lo sitting in the mirror. Oh. This reminds me uh, when I was just like in the block, like running up and down the block, like my hair all wild. This reminds me when I took my hair out on the block and I was just running around the Bronx. J-Lo, shut yourself up. J-Lo is ridiculous. You know what J-Lo reminds me of? And what she's doing with Ben Affleck. We're going to get into this report. But first, let's clown J-Lo for a little bit because, you know, we got to clown people. It's it's part of life, Right. J-Lo, you, you ever see a friend and they date somebody and who they date is they like a certain person. So if they're dating a girl that's like the preacher's girl and you have your guy friends and yeah, he's from the hood, right? But when he's around this girl, he's like on some G unit, like he's on some like like 21 like i don't even know how to describe or he got a little bit of atlanta accent but when he's around this good girl he's like yeah you know what i'm saying yeah and you just look at like really you you a hood star now you just look at like okay you like it i love it j-lo reminds me of that guy that guy when they're dating a good girl and they're like what Oh my God, her team! You you carried a you carried a gun to school. What? Um, and she's telling her friends, Hakeem grew up in the middle of the hood. Like when he was like, uh, uh, um, when he was in eighth grade, like the stick up boys were running up on him. Like, and they're just telling all these like hood antics. And you like, Hakeem, your mom sent you to Catholic school, and yeah, maybe you visited your cousins in the hood. And I'm not saying, listen, this has nothing to do with anybody's blackness because black is everything. It's just a point that's like, Hakeem, you know you was never like in the hood like that, but go ahead and play it up for your little girlfriend, right? 
it seems to me that Ben likes this version of J-Lo, the hood. Ben is his white boy from Boston, right? And think about it. With J-Lo, every man she's with, she becomes, right? Think about when she was with Diddy, with the bandana and with, you know, I need a ride or die, but right? That was her, right? Um, uh, all I need in this life of sin is me and my girlfriend. When she was Mark Anthony, she was the most Latina person ever. Even though when she was dating Ben Affleck, she was like talking about, I don't want to be considered a Latina artist. I want to be considered an artist. Then she turned into like Miss Latina, right? Then, um, you know, she got with Catherine Smart and she was like forever young with that little boy before he got caught going to the gay peep shows on like 57th Street in Manhattan. So anyway, I feel like Jay J Ben really liked the fact that she was like, don't be fooled at the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. I think that's what he really liked about her. Like, yo, I'm dating a spicy Latina. Because remember that thing when the paparazzi, I'm about to get into the reports. Just let me, let me call, let me talk my ish. It's going to come all together. So y'all remember when like, th this was like, of course y'all don't, because y'all got real lives. This is my job to actually pay attention to this stuff. I get it, right? So there was like, I think a month or two ago, where it was something really cringe, where Ben and J-Lo were in uh, 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 Manhattan or the Bronx for whatever reason, right? And these and Ben opens the door for J-Lo. She gets in. And then Ben goes around to the uh, driver's side to get in. No problem. These girls pull up. And they're just like, oh, my God, are you Ben Affleck? They wasn't even trying to talk to that man because, J-Lo, you're the only dummy that's falling for Ben and whatever he got going on because everybody else knows that he is always a recovering addict that cheats with the nanny and drunk and giving cocktail waitresses big tips that you're running up behind it, allegedly grabbing the tips because you got you got a problem with your man tipping the waitress. Baby, you can take that tip back all you want. He going to be there when the waitress gets off and give her the real tip he wanted to give her. Like, girl, you can't stop. You can't stop that damn from breaking. But all honesty... Anyway, he's walking around to the driver's side seat and these girls pull up and they're like, oh my God, are you Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck, oh my God, Ben, what are you doing here, right? And they're like, oh my God, Ben, Ben Affleck. Just again, you're driving and you look at Ben Affleck and he's like, oh, hey, J-Lo leans over and says, step off, bees, and call those girls out their name. Now, first of all, Jayla, you've been out of New York too long. If you thought that somebody was going to park that car and be like, who the F are you calling? Like, the fact that you even elevated it to be that disrespectful, one, you've been gone from New York for too long because, baby, yeah, no. But second of all, it let me know a glimpse into the relationship. You are talking to your white Boston boyfriend who was raised in Boston with a Harvard professor mom and all this other stuff and been in Hollywood for the last thing. So you like telling them like your hood stories. Yeah. In the Bronx, we don't be letting girls talk to our man. Uh-uh. I would be like, step off B. And he'd be like sitting there in bed. What else you tell them, baby? What else you tell them? I would be like, you better step off, baby. This is mine. So she's regaling him, but she looks like a weirdo when she tries to do it in public. The people that really know how Bronx girl, call a Bronx girl unprovoked or any girl in New York unprovoked a B to her face, unprovoked. Step off, bitch. What? Have you lost your love of... You don't even want to know. New York girls, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, you're just getting disrespectful like that, right? You literally demand and people get handsy with you. But does someone like Ben that looks at New York and Bronx like, oh my God, she grew up in the hood. That's the way these spicy Latinas act. He's just, it's like foreplay to him. He don't know, right? He literally, Becky, and from private school, being regaled with his hood girlfriend's uh, uh, stuff. So when she's like, yeah, step off me to just regular women in a car, just being like, oh my God, Ben Affleck. And I was like, yeah, she'd be putting on shows for Ben Affleck. So she has this uh, documentary where she takes her hair out of her ponytail. And also, J-Lo, you are 50. You have been in Hollywood for the last uh, 30 years. You are worth two, three, four, five hundred million. Girl, stop it. And she's looking in the mirror. And she's like, oh, my God. And she go, her hair is like all like whatever. She's like, oh, my God. 
you know, like, oh, this reminds me of, look at the thing. This reminds me when I was in the Bronx oh, and I was just run, 16 running up and down the block and oh, my hair was all over the place. Oh my God. That's what J-Lo's doing. And I'm just looking at her like, this is humiliating. This is embarrassing for you. Then she was talking about some like, yeah, I got a chop cheese. No, what did she say? She's like, yeah, I used to go to the bodega. If you know, you know. And she's been gone for so long. She doesn't even remember the order. I would get a bag of chips, an orange drink. If you know what you know, if you know, you know, and a ham and cheese. Who, New York. Who the hell is walking into a bodega and getting ham and cheese on a roll? Shut your dog. Like, that don't even make sense. And you need to go to Bodega to know you are not going into the Bodega for a ham and cheese sandwich, a bag of chips, and an orange drink. First of all, it would be a Welch's grape. Second of all, it would be a chopped cheese or a bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper with turkey bacon. Or it would be like, it would, like, I, or you would get like an egg salad on the thing, but you'd be looking at the egg salad like, have they changed it? Because I was just in here four days ago and that looked like the same egg salad. Um, what is this egg salad? And you'll be arguing with the person. Is this fresh? Let me taste. What do you mean I can't taste? All right, I'll take the egg salad, but it's not fresh. You know, put some hot and sweet peppers on there. Maybe that will kill whatever bacteria. Who does that? She is just, she's desperately trying to now reconnect with this hood aspect with the Bronx where it's like, girl, you're rich, you're pampered. Just be happy. But Ben likes that part of her. That's what drew. So now she's trying to become this 50-year-old woman from the hood, from the Bronx, talking like you 23. Now, why do I bring this up? For a couple of reasons. One, to clown J-Lo, admittedly. Come on now, you know what this is. But also to say that I believe that Jennifer is the type of woman that turns into what her man wants her to be. You know, guys and girls do it. But I believe J-Lo's the type of woman that does that. Why is that important? Because I believe that when she was with Diddy, she turned in to the type of woman that Diddy wanted, Diddy needed, and Diddy desired. Now, if you take what we now know about Diddy's desires for these violent delights, it makes a lot more sense that maybe she was holding the hammer for him in the club when Diddy's violent delights had violent ends. Baby, let's get into this mess, all right? First, let me just read these super chats. Uh, Pearly Noir, 76, it caught my first live. Love you, girl. Thank you, Pearly. Thank you, Pearly Noir, for the super chat. And Crystal Cove, thank you so much for the generous super chat. You said, happy resurrection, resurrection day. That's right. Jesus, it's Sunday. Tisa and the Tattletales just got in, so I'll rewind later. Pop your is, sister, and keep bringing us the messy. Thank you so much, Crystal Cove. Happy Easter to you. And you ain't missed nothing. I was just busy clowning. J-Lo, but let's get into these reports about the federal investigation. And let me tell you something, right? I'm going to do a video. Also, I'm going to go live a couple of times tonight. I promise you I'll be live three times tonight and like that. So turn your subscribe, turn your notifications on, or make sure you watch the replay when you're on your way to work, brushing your teeth, doing whatever tomorrow morning. I mean, do what you want. It's just a suggestion, okay? Let's get into this. So first we got... um with the J-Lo situation, they're saying, you know, I made a little slideshow because, you know, I like to get, make, I'm trying to be, I think, um, I'm trying to get you guys more invested. Anyway, they said the FBI is looking to expand probe into Diddy. Agents plan to investigate claims Mogul used ex-J-Lo to carry his bang bang in the 1999 shooting. Now, mind you, we're going to get into Natalia's claims because she claims that J-Lo was the one holding it and that she can prove it. Now, I think that Natalia, rightfully so, had some type of settlement with Diddy so that she let it go. But in prior interviews, I remember Natalia saying that so many people, she was being harassed. And she said she was being harassed by Diddy. And what she says is a lot like what Little Rod says is happening to him. So it leads me to believe her 
and what she's saying is more likely or not to be true. And if it is true, then F that settlement, girl. You better go get that money because judging by the way things are going, um, yeah, I don't know. You know Diddy's house has got raid. People are saying that the powers that be um, raided his house to destroy information. And you know what I said? Maybe. But see, here's the thing. They were destroying information for Diddy's billionaire friends. Diddy's still going down. But if Diddy had any evidence to hold against any of his billionaire friends, come on, we all going down together. His billionaire friends looked at him and said, we? Ninja, you French? What you mean we? Parlez-vous français? What you mean we? Uh, you. It too. Anyway, um, the FBI may expand its blank trafficking probe into embattled hip-hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs following claims that he used his girlfriend J-Lo to carry his bang-bang in the infamous 1999 nightclub shooting. Now, here's the thing. Cassie said that Diddy made her carry the Bang Bang. I 100% believe. And also, how you getting into a nightclub? Because I do know for a fact that they checked all men, but women, they don't really go through your purses like that. They don't pat you down, and you could sure damn sure put a razor blade underneath your tongue or put something down your... Well, I don't know. I'm just saying. Anyway, law enforcement sources told the New York Post that the incident could be reinvestigated in the wake of the new information revealed in producer Rodney Little Rod Jones' 30 million blank assault lawsuit. Again, why does not Diddy settle with Little Rod? Because Little Rod and his attorney are not playing. I don't know what media strategy they have. I don't know what Sean Holly bottom sternum, um, that one guy, uh, uh, who is it? Alec Baldwin's old attorney and Jonathan Davey. I, I honestly don't know what they have in mind, but Little Rod's attorney swears they have the proof. They keep dialing it up. You know, Young Miami went out there like a dummy. Instead of just sitting there and being quiet, she somehow think everybody knows that Diddy's going to be bankrupt in a year, or at least I suspect, right? Who knows what the future holds? But this is all my opinion. By the way, you guys, I do have to say Diddy maintains his innocence. He said this is all a witch hunt. His kids are perplexed. Daphne out there um, uh, defending him. Young Miami out here giving him alibis that are not holding up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my live about the way Young Miami was caught in a lie, showing screenshots that she ain't see Diddy on the 29th when she 100% did bring him the touchy um, or 2C. Thank you so much for you guys for telling me how to pronounce that. And then Diddy out there getting giving money out at a mall. By the way, Banks just released that Diddy is basically a hundred million in debt. And then Diddy showed up that uh, the next day handing out cash at a mall. And I said, ain't it funny that Diddy don't got no problem with people thinking that we are he is the rap Jeffy Epilator, but he damn sure don't ain't gonna, gonna let us know he ain't broke. You are out here. But after being accused of basically being the hip hop Jack the Ripper, handing out money like at like Daddy Warbucks at the mall, which told me a few things. Let me just go on a little tangent before we get back to this article. And let me know one thing. This is the mentality that Diddy has around the people around him. The fact that, like, what's it supposed to do? You handing out random money to people. Um, thank you for the hundred dollars. Now, sir, go to jail. What is that supposed to do about swaying the way people think about you? You not you didn't go to a school, you didn't go to a charity, you didn't go to a center for people, victims of domestic violence. You literally went to a mall and was handing out cash to random people, which lets me know even Diddy's mentality that you keep people around you and you're used to your money going away. It was just weird. It looks dumb. It just looks like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Who? And that's when I was like, who's Diddy's PR people? Are there like three hamsters with like little hats on and paper clips holding his head? What are you doing? Handing out money. Sir, you are accused of being Jeffrey Epstein. What is $50 going to do? What is $100 besides making you look like a weirdo? Are you going to give 100 Like, what is going on? Oh, here you go. Like, it's just weird. But I guess Diddy wants us to know. I might be a Jeffrey Epstein, but I damn sure ain't broke. I guess.
<laughs> I guess if this is your PR pushback and you walking around acting like nothing's wrong, everybody accusing you to be Jack the Ripper and his Instagram profile picture is him, brother love, smiling, literally going like this, smiling. Just like that, making a heart looking like a creep, like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I guess you would have said, I guess. Holly W said, come for the shade, stay for the court case. That's right, Holly W. And to thank you for the super chat. And Tiffany Shells, thank you so much for the super sticker. Y'all, let's get into this, all right? This is just being a weirdo. And the more he does, the more he crashes out. It's just weird, weird, weird. Anyway, right? Um, Back to this. Michael Discario, Discario, I don't know, D-I-S-C-I-O, Discario? Michael, Michael D, right? He got an Italian last name. A New York criminal defense attorney um, who is familiar with the case said they got eyes on him in Miami and the feds are talking to witness after witness. They're corroborating everything they can, but everything past and present is on the table for Mr. Diddy right now. No, I'm waiting for my sources to get back. I'm going to go live later on because we have some tea on what's going on with this Diddy case and when justice is going to come. Rodney alleged in his lawsuit that Diddy openly bragged about committing the bang bang and getting away with it. I believe that when he's on that 2C, he'd be zooming. Remember when Pookie was dancing in New Jack City? Talking about something, you got some breast milk? Y'all remember that when he was like, mm, right? Uh, what was he dancing to? What was he dancing to? New Jack Swing or all I want to do is do the zoom, zoom, zoom. And he was getting high on his own supply, dancing like a fool. That's what Diddy be doing whenever he be like, getting that 2C. Miami be waking up bright and early. That's another thing. Why is Miami lying for Diddy? I assume she's lying for Diddy. If she's not, my apologies, but she definitely is lying. Because, at least from what I see, because, um, honestly, let's think about this. Um, Diddy don't care about Miami. He never seemed to respect her. I know she thought she was going to tame him, but this man got seven kids by four different women, ain't married now one of them. He has a harem. And she somehow thinks by playing the dummy, that's going to make her get favorite spot and move up. Girl, I guess. Get it how you live it. Not even that. What are you going for? Diddy is going to be ruined and bankrupt in a year. And baby, he ain't coming back from this. Did Bill Cosby come back from this? Listen, wasn't Bill Cosby and Jeffrey Epstein and all these people acting dumb, erratic, walking around? <laughs> Everything is okay. <laughs> I'm not scared. <laughs> Who's scared? <laughs> not me. Looking ha happy, sad, confused, angry, scared, and anxious all at the same time. That's what Diddy's doing, baby. We know a crash out when we see one. Young Miami's the only one. Diddy now walking around Miami like he ain't got... A care in the world. Ha ha. Y'all see me with a with a guilty man be giving out random money at the mall? Would he? To which I say, yes. Yes, Sean. Absolutely. You look exactly what I expected a guilty man to do. And young Miami on a on a yacht twerking and trying to be like, I'm unbothered. <sighs> Hear me when I say this, Carisha. It is Easter Sunday. Can everybody join hands and say a prayer of protection for Carisha? Because, you know, Carisha, your boyfriend, because I still don't think that she's distanced herself from Diddy, your boyfriend has been accused of all this stuff, or your special male friend, because he never claimed you. You are the aesthetics. You've been accused of being a essay worker. Um, you were accused of being a high priced as a freak off worker. Um, you then got on Twitter and said, y'all believe anything to let us know. Were you a low priced freak off worker? Because the payments were made. The federal tax authorities might be looking at you. The feds are definitely working at looking at you. If you are not called to testify, you will be mentioned in some stuff, um, because you joined in. Um, do you really think a yacht, when we all know you ain't got a job, um, with your girlfriends, we, we all know that, you know, some of them are down for the freak offs with Diddy, um, while you are twerking seductively, all those things, twerking, the yacht, 
your girlfriend. None of them independently is bad, but the optics of all three, it's giving hooker vibes. And I'm not saying she's a hooker. I am saying that she is coming across as one. And I think she's doing it because she's trying to match Diddy's energy. He's unbothered. I'm unbothered. You make accusations about me. I'm going to, about my man. I'm going to prove they're not true. Baby, go down with that ship. Go down. Anyway, they said, according to Rodney, uh, Diddy shared that he was responsible for the bang bang in the nightclub in New York. Diddy's girlfriend at the time, J-Lo, a.k.a. J-Lo, uh, Jennifer Lopez, a.k.a. J-Lo, carried the gun into the club for him and passed him the bang-bang after he got into an altercation with another individual. He went on to claim that Diddy was often bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning that 1999 New York City nightclub shooting with Shine. Interestingly enough, um, people are saying that the feds are looking to Diddy his house in Belize and the private jet flight shipments that come back and forth from the U.S. to Belize. Interestingly enough, Shine is involved in the political system in Belize. So one would wonder if Diddy was doing something illegal, like the feds might suggest he is, that Shine would be his man on the ground, which is why all this mess is happening in Belize. Um, if you guys don't remember, they said Diddy and J-Lo were arrested alongside Diddy's bodyguard Anthony Wolf Jones and fellow rapper Shine Barrel find following a 1999 shooting in Times Square nightclub that left three bystanders wounded. The shooting allegedly stemmed from an argument between Diddy and another man named Matthew Scar Allen. J Lo was released from custody without being charged um, after 14 hours in jail. Diddy and Jones also walked free, but Shine was eventually sentenced to 10 years in prison after the seven week trial in 2001. Despite his conviction, rumors that Diddy made Shine take the fall have persisted. Natanya Rubin, one of the three victims of the shooting, has long insisted that Diddy was the one that banged her. Now let's get into what Natanya has to say. She says she insists that Diddy blanked her in the face decades ago, willing to have bullet fragments tested. The police still do have the bullet fragments. I know Diddy is sitting in the house sick because that's the thing. I wonder when people play make-believe, do they still know in the back of their head that things are going down? Because Diddy looks like he's been stress eating. He looks like he's packed on at least 30, 35 pounds. Um, I don't know. Maybe even 40 pounds. Or maybe he just can't afford... Um, Roy's exempic or whatever. I'm not saying he's on any of them. I'm just saying. One of the victims in the infamous club New York shooting involving Sean Diddy Combs, Jennifer Lopez and rapper Shine Barrel is willing to go out, go the distance to prove her claim that Diddy was the one that banged her, banged her, banged, banged her in the face and got away with it. Natanya Rubin, uh, was one of the three people hurt in the 1990 in 1999 incident. And once the bullet fragments taken out of her face for ballistics evidence, because she wants the case reopened and the 50 year old, one year old told, um, guest host, Brian Enton on news nation. Anyway, news nation, the Elizabeth Vargas reports had a guest host named Brian Enton. I guess he wanted his name in here. Anyway, she says, I'm willing to have a doctor remove a part of the nine millimeter bullet in my face so that they can use it as evidence if needed be for this trial. And it may cost me life. Now, all jokes aside with Natanya, because she looks like really beautiful and healthy now. When you look at pictures of when it happened, this girl literally did almost lose her life. And the fact that you remember how much they used to pack clubs back in the day and the fact that Diddy trying to act bad. And if it is true, J-Lo actually doing that. Yeah, whoever helped and whoever didn't needs to be held accountable. She admitted in court, but Barrel admitted in court he fired the bang bang that night. But Natanya has insisted for years he unfairly took the fall for Combs. She says she still has nine bullet fragments in her face. Wow, how sad. From the shooting, which happened in the early morning hours of December 27, 1999, in the now defunct Club New York, just off Times Square. Has anybody in the chat ever been to Club New York? Does anybody remember that happening? 
The gunfire erupted after a dispute between Diddy, who was then known as Puffy, and his entourage, and a Brooklyn drug dealer named Matthew Scar Allen. They play Matthew like that, a Brooklyn drug dealer. Put some respect on this man's name. Anyway, Shine, then 21, and part of Diddy's crew was nabbed by police as he ran out the club with a weapon. Diddy and J-Lo also fled the club in a Lincoln Navigator, but was stopped by cops on 8th Ave and arrested. J-Lo was released after 14 hours and was never charged in the case. After a six-week six trial, Shine was sentenced to 10 years in prison. How much money did, if you believe that Diddy bought off Shine, how much money do you get, think he gave Shine for 10 years in prison? I hope it equal to $100 million. How much money would it take you to go to prison? I don't know. I, I don't know. We're, it, please, a million a year. If you don't get out of my face, you better like maybe $10 million a year. But then again, I remember that HBO series, Oz with Adam BC and all that mess to be happening in prison. You couldn't pay me to go to prison. You know, Adam BC ain't coming into my uh, coming into my cell with his little scully cocked over, talking about some A. Mm, no, no. I listen. I don't care what I agreed. I literally would have just been watching reruns of Oz. Like, go. I ain't going to jail anyway, right? Um. She. So anyway, Natanya said, "I saw Diddy pull out a black bang bang with his right hand." Adding, she felt as though a flaming hot sledgehammer had hit her in the face. She's a mother of three now. She was a mother of three and she was, and she has stuck to her story since day one. I literally watched them pull out the guns. I had a clear point of view. I mean, for God's sake, I got shot in my nose. I was facing them directly. I watched everything occurred and have described it vehemently to all parties involved. She's not surprised some still deny her accusation. She says, I give very little credibility to what they're saying because while everyone else is Monday morning quarterbacker, I am the survivor. I was physically there. Who better to tell you what happened than the person who got shot smack dab in between their eyes? Despite her confidence, confidence, she said she's afraid of meeting an untimely device. She said, I'm a healthy woman. I live a simple, quiet, risk adverse life. So if I should meet an untimely demise, it will, it will require be worthy of deep investigation. I understand the peril of what I am exposing my life to. Now, here's the thing, right? Forget about reopening a case, even though that would actually be really, really bad for Diddy. If they do, if the feds are investigating, and this was a state crime, not a federal, and they find out that witnesses were bribed, evidence was hidden, police were paid off, security footage, because the feds have a way to get to this stuff. Baby, Diddy is looking at more than just jail time for the shooting. And there is the possibility that all that could go down. But you guys, listen, I also dug up some old blind items from that time about J-Lo and Diddy. And I think that's going to expose a little light on this. Hold on. Let me read it to you after I get through these super stickers. Peer-to-peer -peer empowerment group Logan. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Um, Twin City Viking 4. Oh, you said so pretty. Love the energy and the content. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, really? J Beauty Style, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. And Freedom Peace, thank you so much for becoming um, a YouTube member. You guys are blessing me. I appreciate that so much. Okay, so let's get into this. So the blind items, if I can just work on that. Oh, this reminds me when I was like 16 and I was like, you know, just like running the block on the Bronx, like my hair all over the place and my mommy being like, oh, Tisa, like comb your hair. Like JLo, shut up, this woman. It's just crazy. Anyway, sh let me get into this because this is the most important thing. Do, 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 do. Where's this? Mm. Where? Oh, here we go. All right. So this blind item is super, super interesting. And if you guys know everything about crazy days and nights, yes, I know the person that ran it is like a piece of ish, but he'd be having good too. T, so we'll go this, right? We'll go there. So this was a blind item from February 14th, 2022. They said, and this is before any of the Diddy stuff came out. They said, although people probably don't remember now, it is pretty common knowledge, right? that an A-list singer-actress once split from her significant other on Valentine's Day. 
People assumed it was because her significant other shot and nearly killed someone. That played a little part, I'm sure. But the real reason is she showed up unannounced because she wanted to talk about the shooting and found an or can I say these words on YouTube? An orgy slash drug gallery going on in her significant other's home. Everyone had no clothes on and was doing illicit substances and they were everywhere. Her significant other literally was having blank on a chair while smoking a cigar with lines of Colombian dancing dust next to him. When she saw, when he saw her, he never even stopped having blank with the person on top of him. He just kind of waved at her with a cigar holding hand. Now everybody's saying that is an old blind item for what happened with JLo and Diddy. Now, why do I tend to think it's true? Because in the Gene Dill interview, he said that um, Diddy, something had happened and Diddy went out of his way and bought up the whole Louis Vuitton store and tried to do everything he could to apologize to JLo, but she refused to hear what he was saying. And this was shortly after the shooting. But there's a few more blind items. I just want to read to you guys um, and see if we can put this all together. Okay. I find it interesting that when I looked at like 10 years of blind items for Diddy, people have been saying for the last 10 years, he is a monster. Mm. What's another one? Hold on. There's a thread. Okay. They said, it didn't have any fixed location. It didn't operate on a consistent basis. If a certain group of people were all going to be in town together for more than a few days, they would set things in motion and open the club. It would generally be a house that was rented for a few days prior to their arrival in time and rented through their visit and a few days after to get it cleaned. These were big houses because the people who organized the club had big money. No one is sure who had the original idea, but the five male founders were a former A-list singer, child, ugh, blank lover, former A-list producer who was married to a permanent A-lister. Uh, everybody says that was Tommy Mottola and Mariah Carey, but just Tommy Mottola was the one that helped Diddy fought. Uh, found the club. Um, and don't forget, Diddy actually bought Tommy Matola's Florida, one of his Star Island residences, to the point of when Diddy didn't even have the money to pay for it, Tommy Matola gave him a loan. Uh, a one named former A list singer. People are saying it might be Sting. People said it could be Prince. I don't think Prince would be down with this type of stuff. He Prince was too smart for that. May he rest in peace. Um, an A list mogul producer, sometime performer, people are saying that was Diddy, and a former A-list singer who is probably B-list now, comes from a family of singers. This is a club, get this, that was only for same blank hookups. If you bought a woman with you, that was fine, but she would only be allowed to interact with women while at the club. Back when number four and that was supposed to be Diddy, was dating the permanent A-lister. They're talking about um, uh, J-Lo. He bought her, and everyone watched her hook up with another woman. Apparently, that was the case for this permanent A-list singer, too, who was not the guest of anyone from 1 to 5. Most of the young men bought to the club were guys who wanted a singing career and were willing to do anything to get it. A foreign-born A-plus singer was a frequent hookup partner of number three, which led to a huge career of the foreign-born singer. As 1 to 5 have aged and also become more distant with each other, there has not been a club date in about a decade. Okay. Again, there's about 10 years in blind items. If I read all the blind items, it's going to be like an hour. Let me know Monday when you guys are at work or not sleep, waking up, whatever. You guys want me to do a special live because I can go through 10 years of blind items with Diddy and we can actually solve it. But all jokes aside, right? What do you guys think? Uh, back to the JLo thing, her scrubbing TikTok and trying to get the top creators pulled down and their channels closed because people are saying that they she she knew that this investigation was somehow coming and she wants to scare everybody from talking about it. I do believe that if the feds look into that, you got the person that was shot saying it was definitely him. You got all this stuff going on. I mean, honestly, y'all, what do y'all think? Let's see in the comments. No, literally. What do y'all think?
hold on, let's get into this. Uh, okay, are you there for the blind items? A motivated man said, I'm here. You know what? I'll do the blind items. We'll do a live. We'll all go through all the blind items and we'll play detective and figure it out. But we know most of them are about Diddy. Somebody said, so wait, Wendy Williams is, was not crazy. You know, that's the funny thing about Wendy Williams. Really tra tragic, sad uh, ending. But it makes me think that one of the reasons, first of all, I believe she was telling the truth about everybody. But secondly, I do believe that maybe one of the reasons she stayed with Kevin so long is because um, compared to like Diddy and what everybody else was doing, maybe Kevin seemed like a catch. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, you guys, listen, I'm going to uh, 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 get off here, take like a 30 minute break. I'll see you guys back here in about 30 minutes. And I'm going live about... Um, uh, some Diddy stuff that I know. Also, I'll be on live later on tonight about Portia and Simon, Diddy, and I'm going to be uploading. And this week, I'm going to try something a little bit different and maybe do a few more lives than I do videos just because I like interacting with you guys. But we'll see how it goes. Because if y'all let it flop, then I'll just go back to my old video stuff. But y'all know how it is. You know I'm going to try to do something. Oh, also, did you guys subscribe and hit the like button? I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit the like button so this live could just keep going on. All right. Um, okay. So everybody's here for the uh, blind items. Okay. I'm going live later on tonight, but tomorrow, Monday, while you guys are at work, you can listen to my voice while we go over 10 years of blind items. So it'll be a good live to listen to. And I'm going to make a fun. I'm going to make a fun and bring some receipts. All right. Okay. Listen. I swear I'll be back on live in about 30, 45 minutes. Meet me back on my channel. Um, baby, this is going to be a heavy upload week. There's so much going on with Diddy and a few other people too. Plus, we got a clown portion to Simon because whoo, Simon about to get Portia fired from Real Housewives of Atlanta. For those of you guys that care, we'll talk about it later also. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, guys. <laughs>